In this video, we will learn how to find first set of a context-free grammar. We will first list down all the rules and then we will do an example to see those rules in action. Here are our four rules that we can use to find first of any terminal or non-terminal of a context-free grammar. We will do example to understand those rules thoroughly, but let's go through them quickly before we start our example. The first rule is saying that first of a terminal contains that terminal. And it is also saying that first of epsilon, which is empty string, contains empty string. So this is our rule number one, which is regarding computing first of terminals and empty string. We are done with rule number one. Rule number two is saying that if we are computing first of our non-terminal, then that first is equal to the right hand side of that non-terminal. So first of x, because x is non-terminal, is equals to the first of what I will turn on the right hand side of that non-terminal. That's rule number two. Let's go to the rule number four before we discuss rule number three. Rule number four is saying that if you if a non-terminal has multiple productions, then in that case, first of that non-terminal is union of first of all of its productions right hand sides. That's rule number four. Finally, rule number three is saying that first of a sequence of terminals and non-terminals can be computed by taking unions of first of each of those symbols, but these unions are conditional. So we will say first of y1, which is first symbol, union only if y1 drives to epsilon first of y2 then union if both y1 and y2 drives to epsilon then we say first union with first of y3 and so on and so forth now let's see those rules in action with a cool example so here is our example context free grammar if we can find first sets for this context-free grammar, then you can find first sets for any context-free grammar. Because I've designed this context-free grammar in a way that you will be able to learn all of those rules using this example. So let's start. I will start from the last production because last production does not depend on any other production. Therefore, it is easier to start from the last production and then going towards the first production. So I have to find first of non-terminal G. So according to my rule number two, first of G will be equals to first of b and this is by rule number two because rule number two says that if you have to find first of a non-terminal then this is equal to the first of the right hand side of that non-terminal now according to my rule number one first of a terminal contains that terminal and because B is our terminal, so first of B contains B. And that's it. I'm able to find first of G. So I will write it here. Next, I have to find first of T. Now, see that T has two different productions. So now I have to use rule number four which says that if you have two productions, then you have to take union of the 
first of the right hand side of those productions. That means first of P will be equal to first of A union first of epsilon. This is by the rule number four. So here we have used rule number two as well as rule number one. And here we are using rule number four where we are taking a union of both of the right hand sides first. Now once again using rule number one first of a terminal contains that terminal and once again using rule number one first of epsilon contains epsilon. So we have used rule number four and rule number one here and that's it we have found first of our non-terminal t which is equals to a and epsilon. Next, I have to find first of F. Now, F also have two predictions. So, first of F equals to, using this prediction, first of PG union, using this prediction, first of C. This is according to the rule number 4. Now, first of Tg according to rule number 3 is equals to first of T which is this. So, is equals to first of T which is equals to this. And if the first of t contains epsilon, then I have to take union and write first of g. This union will only be uh, used when the first of t contains an epsilon. And in this case, first of t does contain an epsilon. Therefore, I have to take union of first of t with first of g. So, first of Tg will be equals to first of T which is A and epsilon and first of G which is B. So here I have A epsilon B but I also have to find first of C and my first of C according to the rule number 1 will contain C. So that's it. By taking a union of both of those sets, my first of F will be A comma B comma C comma epsilon. Next, I have to find first of E. My first of E will be equals to, because I have only one production, so it will be equals to first of A F T. Now, it will be equals to first of A union, but this union will only be written here and I will write here first of F only when first of A has epsilon. Also I will write union first of T when first of F and first of A has epsilon. Because first of A is equals to A because A is a terminal and according to the rule number 1, first of A is equals to A. So, these two unions will not be taken. So, 
I will not take this union, I will not take this union as I don't have epsilon in the first of A. So my answer will be that first of E will be equal to A. So I will write A here in this first set. Finally, I have to find first of P. According to this, my first of P is equal to first of E. And first of E is equal to A. So my first of P will be, be equal to A. And that's it. So I have used all of those rules and I'm able to find a first set for each non-terminal. These rules are so simple that once you understand it for the one context-free grammar, you can apply it on any other context-free grammar and find the first sets for all the non-terminals.